Welcome. Come and join me on a journey. This is a journey first envisioned by St. Teresa of Avila and recorded in her book, The Interior Castle, in 1588. As we travel along Teresa's journey in this video, you may, like me, find parts of it familiar and others more difficult to relate to. I invite you to simply notice your responses and offer these as reflections to God. In Teresa's vision, she saw the soul as a castle made of very clear crystal in which there were many mansions. At the center of the crystal castle is the sun or the king who gives all splendor and beauty to the rest of the castle. Her journey through these seven mansions is seen as a guide to spiritual change, a deepening journey to what she called union with God if you find the word union a difficult one to relate to, it might help you to know that the idea behind this word was a deep love for God, sometimes described as marriage. As we enter the first mansion through the practice of prayer, we experience an awakening to life in the Spirit. Here we meet the Lord, our gardener, for the first time and draw water for the garden through an interactive kind of prayer which Teresa calls the prayer of recollection. In this mansion, she urges us to spend time in the rooms of self-knowledge and humility. She says this humility is an important defense against the self-interest and pride which we are likely to experience at this stage of the journey. In these first mansions, we might face obstacles and distractions and so spiritual mentors are important for our survival and growth. In the second mansion, Teresa focuses on the role of prayer as a doorway to our interior castle. In this mansion, she says we might hear God only indirectly through sermons or books or friendships. She says that we will need to visit the room of prayer practice and persevere in prayer as we navigate our way through temptations and trials. We also might visit the room of active recollection, which is where she says we remember that God lives within us and our souls go deeper in our journey with Him. In these first two mansions, we're compared to silkworms, diligently spinning our way towards God. The third mansion, is her call to the life of deeper spirituality. In this mansion, she said, her soul had overcome its initial difficulties, and now she spent long periods in prayer, experiencing what she called deep consolation and sweetness. At the same time, this might be a dry period in the journey, and the silkworm enters its cocoon and is surrounded by darkness, unsure of what might come next. The light of God's presence seems dimmed, yet we also begin to touch the supernatural. The entrance to the fourth mansion marks a significant transition in the soul's journey. For the first time, we experience supernatural prayer in two forms, which St. Teresa calls the prayer of quiet and the prayer of passive or supernatural recollection. Teresa also speaks of the symbol of water, and here she uses water fountains to describe these different states of prayer. In this stage, we're finally able to drink directly from God. The heavenly water flows into us as we surrender to God's mystery. The experience of supernatural prayer cannot be forced, but instead must flow like water. In the fifth mansion, we begin to experience deep transformation as we engage in the prayer of union. Our deepening prayer is the cocoon and we undergo metamorphosis, becoming so filled with Christ that here we emerge as beautiful as butterflies. Teresa emphasizes the need to weave this focus on prayer into everyday life as the love we show to our neighbors grows in response. At this stage of the journey, 
we're caught up in the slipstream of the Holy Spirit, doing what God's once done, but without the need for the external scaffolding, which was so important in the earlier stages. The sixth mansion is one which Teresa spends much time describing. This mansion might be known as the dark night of the soul, as it is one in which we could experience many challenges. These could be physical illness or depression, temptation or persecution, and oddly to our modern ears, Teresa mentions undeserved praise as one of the most tormenting of these. At the same time as we face these difficulties, it is here that our souls fall deeply in love with God and we experience a great hunger for solitude. Teresa describes an unusual array of mystical experiences and ways of communicating with God. However, she also cautions us not to rely on these and she urges meditative prayer to ground us through these experiences as we prepare to enter the seventh mansion. In the center of Teresa's vision is the innermost castle, which is different from all the others. This mansion she describes as the place of our mystical marriage to Christ. Here she tells us that all three persons of the Trinity communicate to our souls. In this mansion, we face no more dryness or interior trial, but only a tender love for the Lord. Teresa once again returns to the image of the butterfly to help describe the transformation of the soul. The silkworm, which emerged from its cocoon as a butterfly in the fifth mansion, now dies, and with the greatest joy, because Christ is now its life.